Okay, well. All right, all right. I'll a sec here and we'll do a little introduction for you. Cool. As I can <laughs> with my voice going here. All right, so on our next session on Big Talk and Small Libraries 2019, we have Shauna Bryce, who is from our Best Small Library in America 2018. Yay! Yay! Um, Madison County Public Libraries in um, North Carolina. And she is going to tell us um, how they got that award, all the great things they've been doing there, and um, what's going on at the library. So I'm just going to hand over to you, Shauna, to go ahead and take it away. Well, thanks so much, Krista, and um, I'm really excited to represent Madison County Public Libraries today, and thanks to the Nebraska Library for um, having us on. Um, I had to explain to my mother-in-law today that I was not going to Nebraska for a conference, um, <laughs> that we were doing this online, and I, I I still think that it's kind of blown her mind and she's still trying to figure that one out. But um, I just think this like this day long virtual conference is such a great idea for small libraries with smaller budgets. And um, I'm just excited that we could be a part of it. Well, you can so, show her the recording later so she can see exactly how it went. What is that? Yeah, I know. I'm kind of excited to, to share that with her, actually. <laughs> So um, a little bit about myself, I have, a, I have a master's in education with a focus on literacy and I taught high school English for um, 18 years. And then um, my family was ready for a change. So we moved to Madison County. We always said that we were going to retire to this area. It just happened a lot earlier than we um, first thought. And um, I left the classroom, decided that I was I was kind of done with that and um, was in between. I was doing some writing and things like that. And like every good resident, the first thing I did was I went and got my library card. And um, soon after that, I joined a book discussion group. And then soon after that, I joined the friends of um, my local branch of the Madison County Library. And at a friend's meeting, I actually heard the director talking about um, a new position that they were going to start advertising for with a grant that they had won. And it would be for a part time technology instructor. And the focus would be working with senior adults. So it's kind of funny that I'm the follow up to the, the um, presentation before because I was like, ah, oh, that's what I do. Um, so that was kind of like how I got my foot in the door here because I was like, oh, this is perfect. I still get to teach and I get to teach senior adults and it's part time so I can still write and do other fun things. And um, I was hired, of course, and then um, about a year went by and my director started talking to me about becoming a branch manager and I was like hard pass. No way. I um, I don't really want to do full time. It's just, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get away from that. And well, here I am. So um, the rest is kind of history. Um, I've been here with the library system for almost five years now, and um, I actually really love um, being a branch manager because it lets me do a lot of different things. And um, I am hoping to apply for my master's of library and informational science in the spring. So. I'm just one of those nerd people. Um, I guess we all are. I'm just one of those nerd people that would like to stay a student as long as possible. Um, so the slide that you're looking at right now are our three beautiful libraries in Madison County. So I'll tell you a little bit about the county too. This, this is the Mars Hill Library and um, that's my library, I call it. It was my library. I live in Mars Hill, so this was um, I was a patron here, and um, now this is where I'm the branch manager. This is, um, the one in the middle is the main branch, the Madison County Public Library, um, and that's located in Marshall. And then, whoop, okay. Then um, the one on the, the third column is, um, this is our Hot Springs Library, and this is our newest um, library space. We actually um, got an OCLC grant to redo this space. And um, 
It is in the small town of Hot Springs, and we're really excited about this. We think it turned out so cool and quite modern, especially considering the building that it used to be in. Um, so a little bit about Madison County. We are, um, we have three distinct towns and each of those towns have three unique libraries to them too. Um, Madison County is in Western North Carolina. If you know anything about North Carolina, it's a little above, um, it's just north of Asheville and um, just before you get to the Tennessee line. Um, our population is roughly about 21,000 and of those 12,500, give or take a few, are um, library card, card holders, um, which is exciting. We do have, um, being a part of the Appalachian Mountains, of course, we, are, we have a rich Appalachian heritage. Um, we've got rich history. Uh, Madison County was one of the places in North Carolina that was split during the Civil War, and that is still talked about today. Um, we have wonderful nature trails, the French Broad River, so we see a lot of tourism. We are on the Appalachian Trail. In fact, um, the town of Hot Springs is on the trail. The library there um, is one of two libraries that's actually on the trail itself. So we get a lot of hikers, especially in the summertime, spring and summertime, we get a lot of hikers too. Um, but that provides some really unique opportunities um, to work with them. And we do like e-library cards for the, the hikers so that they can um, download stuff on their devices and take it with them on their hikes. So we've got, we've got a lot of great culture. We've got bluegrass music. We've got great artists, writers, um, it's, it's a really great place to, to live and to work. So I think part of, or the main reason that maybe um, we were uh, selected for best small library is really the um, collaboration and partnership. And part of our strategy here at Madison County Public Libraries is our focus is um, kind of a four part focus with literacy, outreach, partnership and technology. And technology for the library here is really big because when you live in the mountains, you don't really get to have the infrastructure for everyone to have access at home for, um, to the internet. So we become a hub for that. Um, and we're always excited about, um, about people being able to come and use the internet since the, lots of times they don't have the, um, capability at home. We are, um, we did have an organization that got a grant and they are um, in the process of installing some high speed internet, but it's still got a ways to go. And we all know that that, that doesn't work as, as quickly as we often hope it does. Um, but with the library, we're able to provide that. So um, I think through the presentation, you'll see the partnership piece. Um, and that's really one of the that's really one of the focus or our focal points um, for our strategy. And what I thought I would do is I thought I would kind of go through um, some of the programs that were highlighted by Library Journal, and and I'll also talk about like how each one has um, changed or evolved, um, and what that's looking like, and what our what our thoughts for the future are as far as each one goes because everybody you know everybody even the staff thinks okay we've gotten this thing but now what so now it's all it's all about the future and what that's gonna hold for us so just like um every library we of course focus on early literacy programs and we offer, we offer early literacy programs at each of our um, branches, each of our three branches. We also, we do some of that in-house with our own staff, and we also partner with the health department and um, Smart Start to provide a Kith and Kin program at our branches as well. And so this is where, you know, um, 
kids can come in from zero to kindergarten. We have, we've had little babies. We've had some here um, at Mars Hill. We had one here that was two weeks old, um, which I was a little bit like, oh, don't get the germ. Don't be out at the germs, but whatever. Um, two weeks old, starting um, with our story time program. And they do, of course, stories. They do a lot of um, early literacy skills, learning letter sounds and what the letters look like. Um, they do singing and dancing. We do some um, really early literacy STEAM activities. We have uh, lots of hands-on. Um, we have some great children's program programming team that really are just they take on these new personas when the um, kids come in and they do voices and and some really great things like that and um, we have we have certain parents that will go to at least two of the story like two different story times at two different branches the hot springs branch is a little farther out for for a lot of people so sometimes they can't get to those but but there have been some that will hit all three during the week which is which is really exciting um we have actually um now what we've done is we have added a new story time and it's called little explorers because we really wanted to um kind of make it uh not just a reading but also incorporate some some other activities with it and um that's at our main branch now and it has all the all the regular components but we've added um a sign language aspect to it so they're starting to learn um, phrases and words to use um, with their parents at home and they're learning letters for sign language and um i would love to see this evolve into a bilingual uh, story time early literacy but right now we only have one person on staff that's fluent in spanish and um she's uh, of course wears many hats um, and just doesn't have enough hours in the day, but that could be something I could see perhaps evolving. Um, and we, as we do have more and more um, Latinos moving into the community. So that's our um, early literacy program. The next thing that um, we are gonna look at is the e-library. And you know, a lot of a lot of libraries have access to the e-library. I think one thing that um, we do well here is we partner with the schools, and um, we provide uh, e-library cards to students um, in the fourth grade, all the way through the twelfth grade, um, at our public high schools or public schools. So we, um, what that actually looks like is we go into the school and I'm one of the ones that goes into the school because I'm still technically the technology instructor for the library system. So um, I go into the school and we do a how to, um, how to access the um, e-library and we go through, they go through, you see the pictures of the different devices. So depending on the class and, and what device they have, we show them how to, um, how to set up their preferences, how to log in with the library card, how to check out a book, how to download it on their device, because we want them to be able to take it home with them. Because like I said before, many of them don't have, um, many of them don't have internet access at home. So if they go to school, they can download um, their books on the device and then take it home and read, um, read at home. And then we also go over how to, um, you know, put books on hold and how to check them out, that kind of thing. Um, so this gives them, and they love the fact that it's free. Um, and they love the fact that they're not going to get um, any overdues. And that's one of the big things that we talk about because they don't have to worry about returning the book on time. It just disappears off their device and they're never overdue. And the kids love that. They're like, oh, I'm not going to be in trouble. That's awesome. So um, we go in and we, we teach them how to do that. We, um, we make sure that they know that um, they can, we talk about troubleshooting and um, we talk also about, you know, this, this works um, for all your e-library materials. And what that has kind of, um, 
what that has kind of evolved into, we did have, we go to all the elementary schools. We have three elementary schools here. Um, one elementary school um, a few years ago, they were, they received a donation. I think it was like the fourth or fifth grade classes received a donation of um, some Kindle fires. And so the, we had a teacher call and say, can y'all help us? You're like, what can we do with these? What are some things I could, you know, really do like with the library and with my classroom? And that was, that was a foot in the door to do some of this e-library. Um, we, um, the way it's kind of evolved now is um, I go into the middle schools and high schools and it helps that I've been an English teacher, I think, because um, I know, I remember what it's like to be in the classroom and I still like being in there. So um, I go into the middle school and um, the high school and teach classes on using um, databases for research. Because the other thing that these e-library cards give them access to is NC Live. And NC Live is, um, a, it's just a warehouse of databases is what I call it. And it's provided by the State Library of North Carolina. And um, they can use, they can log in with their, this, this library card and access all kinds of material that they can use for research. And it gets them away from Wikipedia and it gets them away from, you know, just trusting a, a random Google search. And we talk about credible um, sources and why you should use the databases over um, just Googling things. And so I get to go in and teach um, using those e-library cards and accessing the databases. And so that's that's how that's kind of evolved now from from mainly a focus on e-library to um, to now including more like database research. In fact, I'm going uh, in two weeks to teach uh, database research at our um, early college high school. So, and that's great because that's that's another partnership. Um, it gets us in the schools, and um, and we do have you know lots of patrons um, that will come back to the library and say, "Hey, remember when you came to our class and you talked about that computer research? I need help with that now." And um, and so that you know, it's getting them in the library. Um, Tweens and teens can sometimes be hard to get in the library, but it, if they know that we're there to help them, especially with their schoolwork and their homework, then I feel like that's a good hook and we can get them early and hopefully keep them coming back for a while. And the other thing, the other great thing about NC Live that we tell them about is it's access, like all lots of public libraries use NC Live and lots of academic libraries use NC Live. So if they get used to using that now, those are still resources, resources that they can and probably will use um, when they go to a um, four-year college in North Carolina. So we're trying to put some of those stepping stones in place to, to help them succeed. Uh, Shauna, we do have a question about that slide that you just had up. Yeah. Because you the principal's testimonial and everything about partnering with the schools. How did you approach the schools to partner or did they approach you? How did that all? We um, we just started talking to the principals, talking to the um, the librarians there. Um, our our former director and myself and some other um staff members also have backgrounds in education so i think that kind of helps um yes. just a little yeah. bit because you know we we get we get it we get the we know the language you know that kind of thing but our our schools are just great to work with and we also we also have already started our store we have a story time that goes out to the schools so our children's um our children's staff uh, they go read, I think it's to the, they go read to the kindergarten once a month. And um, we've just, we've really established a great relationship with the schools. We try and get something targeted for each grade level. And, and you know, high school's harder to do, I think, because especially high school and middle school, they've just got so much that they have to get done. 
Um, but we really we thought this would be a good way to get to them, especially with research that they're going to have to be doing um, in the upper grade levels. Right. Awesome. Um, and someone else had another question here. Do you have issues with students that attend and live outside of your area and will be considered a non-resident user? So, um, I know that we have a few like that, but we have just the, so the e-library cards are good for about four years, I think. And then they, they expire unless they're, unless they come in and talk to us about, you know, renewing them or whatever. But, um, I think we have so few in that category that we were just kind of like, eh, so what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we just we just wanted to make sure that the kids had, you know, equitable access. And um, and we do partner with um, I have worked with homeschool groups um, oh. and, um, you know, they that that's a little trickier and you have to know the people that are doing the homeschool groups. So that's harder, harder to really get into. But a lot of that comes from just. Um, Thankfully, I get to work the circulation desk and stuff, too. So I get to start asking questions and that that's where a lot of it comes from as well. It's just um, making those connections with people and finding out and start asking questions. Um, but yeah, that's a that's something else that we really want to work towards is um, is making sure that those homeschool groups and um, private schools and things like that, they have the same kind of access that that the public school kids do, too. Sure. Sure. And one last question about this will do. Sure. Um, and uh, the question says, do you find a conflict with the school libraries or are you working with them? We we work with them. We work yeah. with them. And so when we go in and we show the, the e-library cards, we do it with the school librarians. And um, and it's just and we we've got we just we got a great connection there and they you know librarians want kids to be readers you know at the school library and the public library so they're always really welcome um really welcoming and um and they know that this the e-library is also gonna you know um is probably going to grant these kids resources that they might not have on their shelves because everybody has limited real estate. So um, this just opens it up. And the um, the state of North Carolina through this e-library program, they actually just launched like two years ago, they launched a um, just for kids e-library. And um, there are lots of titles that have like multiple copies so that classrooms can check out like sets and they can all be reading it together. So that's helped with a lot of teachers, too, because they might not be able to purchase those those hard copy sets, but they can rely on the e-library and use those for free. Right. So is, is that um, e-library card that's an actual physical card, not a, not an electronic? I mean, the actual card. Yeah, right now it's a physical card. Um, we are going to migrate to a new system um, this spring, and then there will be no physical card. It'll just it'll be linked to like their student number, which is uh -huh. kind of good because they know those numbers by heart, and it'll be easier for them to access. So yeah. So right now it is, but then it's not going to be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Go ahead. Go on. Okay, cool. So, um, Literacy Leaps is a new program that we um, also started kind of in conjunction with the schools. Um, it is a it is a one-on-one um, -on -one or very small group tutoring um, session that we offer. And it started out as um, third through fifth grade and this year it has grown to first through fifth grade and it is for targeted students who are below grade level um, and struggling in the classroom and so what this looks like is a, a student um, is identified by his or her teacher as struggling the teacher um, contacts us contacts our literacy coordinator and um, 
gives us the name and sets and the teacher sets all this up. We have a we have lead teachers at the schools that do this and they they communicate with the parents, they sign them up and then they let us know um, who the kid is and um, what the focus needs to be. And then um, once a week, the uh, bus drops them off from school. The bus will drop them off at the library and um, the kids come for an hour of um, tutoring. And when it started out, right now it's only at two of our elementary schools. Um, and when it started out, it was, uh, we had one session um, once a week, so for each school. And now um, this year we started, um, we have two sessions. So we get two different groups. So like here at Mars Hill, um, we have a session on Monday and then on Wednesday. So we have a Monday group and a Wednesday group. And then at Marshall, we have a Tuesday group and a Thursday group. And um, they come in and they, um, they get, you see the picture, uh, they get one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully one-on-one, -on -one. if not, it's like two, two to one um, intensive uh, tutor training based on what their specific needs are. Um, I actually get to participate in this, which I'm, I'm really excited about being a um, literacy teacher. So I actually have um, a student uh, that I get to work with on Mondays. And I know, and we also try and keep the same tutor with the kid because a lot of it is, a lot of it is, you know, building a relationship and, and building confidence. And I think too, we've had more success when the same person works with the same kid because they know what that kid needs to work on. And we keep copious notes on, um, you know, this is what we did today. This is how, how it went and probably what we need to do next week. Um, we, um, are hoping to get it in the, in the third elementary school. It's just been a struggle with that just because like every other library system where we're short staffed and don't have enough hours in the day and um, just need more, more people to help us with this. Um, but it has, um, it has been really successful. The goal is for them to, um, to you know be reading and doing math at grade level uh, last year we had 65 percent of those kids pass their end of grade test and um at first we were kind of like oh only 65 percent but still that's way good and um that's you know there's those kids were you know in danger of not passing their their end of grade test had they not had some of that extra extra tutoring. Um, we um, have some really, really great volunteers that work with this program and, and are so passionate and committed to this program. Um, the way that it's evolved, I've already said, you know, it's, um, it, we've doubled it this year. Um, we, you know, we have a waiting list uh, of students um, and a lot of that has to do with we just don't have enough space to have too many um, in the meeting room at one time. Um, and we do try and make sure that they're in small groups with tutors too, because otherwise it just becomes, um, it just becomes kind of crazy. Uh, the, the idea this year too is to do more um, benchmark testing so that and, and the schools do the benchmark test, but um, we're doing a better job now of getting um, that information from the teachers so that if if we see that, um, you know, student A is now at at or above grade level, then we can move that student, you know, say, hey, you've graduated from literacy leaps. Good for you. You don't you don't need us for a while and then move another one in that um, that might be struggling. Uh, the hardest part of this program is turning kids away um, because 
you know, parents talk in the community, parents talk and they um, start talking about this great tutoring program at the library. But um, and so they'll call the library and say, hey, I want my kid to be tutored. And it doesn't really work that way. It has to be um, it has to be a. Uh, um, one where the teacher has identified that and gone through the process. So that's, you know, that's the hardest part is, is to turn somebody down. But we always say, you know, there is a, you know, talk to your teacher, talk to the lead teacher, um, get on that list and um, we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. Um, we do have this, a couple of questions about the yeah, tutors. Sure. Um, you said they were volunteers. So where do they where do they actually come from? Are they like trained tutors or? Yes, we well we we provide in house training. Um, our literacy coordinator is a she is a recruiter. I mean, I've never seen somebody that can recruit some volunteers like this girl can. Um, and I think a big she also works part-time circulation desk for me here at Mars Hill. And actually, I think that has worked in her favor because she'll start talking with people and she'll she'll notice, um, you know, in conversations, she'll find out, oh, you used to be a teacher. Well, guess what? We have this literacy program and we need volunteers, you know. Uh, you know. Yep. Um, and really, we have... Um, we're blessed to have some really great friends groups that um, also, you know, they volunteer and they get out in the community and they beat the bushes for us and, and try and, and get us volunteers too. Um, so it, a lot of it, I think, is about having the right person in that, in that like recruitment piece. Um, but then we do provide, um, we do provide training for our volunteers um, and then we update the training. So every, you know, every few months we say, hey, here's a strategy that you might you might want to try with your um, with your your kids uh, so that we try and and, you know, a lot of people are they're like, oh, I can't I can't do the reading. And well, I'm going to tell you this new math that they do. It, it <laughs> is baffled. I mean, it's just crazy. But um, we also reach out to, we have two high schools here. One is an early college high school and they require community service for their students for graduation. And so we tap into them. When I go to the high schools, I, say, I, I make a plug for, hey, if you're looking for community service and you like to work with kids, we've got this program. And it's great if you can get teenagers to to um, volunteer at the library. And I tell them too, they kind of get to be rock stars because these little kids think they're so cool. And <laughs> and plus they know that new math that, that they had to learn and I don't. I don't. So um, as, as often as we can get um, teenagers in, we try and do that. That was trickier to coordinate because, you know, they've got jobs and they've got sports and they've got clubs and everything else um but we do have a few we do have a few teenagers that that tutor for us and we try right. and keep them as long as possible all right so since they're all volunteers then there's no um no one being paid to do it so that this is at no cost to the kids this is free for the kids who need it, it is free for the kids yes yes awesome. all right great thank you all right so the next um the next thing that we we're going to highlight is this great eco explore um this is a partnership we have with the north carolina arboretum and um we became a hot spot where um the kids come in and there are things that they can do they can join the eco explore program and then um there are like uh, little assignments that they can do um, to earn different points and they can go to different hot spots throughout um, our Western North Carolina area. And then the Arboretum also comes in um, each season to do a program um, on some kind of um, ecology theme. 
and they will do the science program for us. And that has been a really good um, opportunity to bring science into the library too. And, um, and it's, as you can see, it's very hands-on. Um, we have these great backpacks that they can check out that have like, one's got a field camera in it and it's amazing because it's like night vision and they're supposed to like track the movements of animals around their house and things like that. And I don't I, I want to check one out because we have a lot of wildlife in my backyard, but, um, and they do all these different things um, and get these different badges through this Eco Explorer um, program. And that uh, that's a partnership with a with a, a organization that it's not local. It's in Asheville, actually. But that so that brings some of the the we call it the big city um, into uh, Madison County. So the next thing um, that we have partnered with my next group is called the Partnership for Appalachian Girls Education. And um, this is one where uh, we've talked about like there sometimes there, there are partnerships that are for certain seasons. And um, our season with Paige is now um, over and they have uh, new partnerships. But the great thing about this, having partnered with them, we partnered with them for two years. Um, this is also where we got some of our um, volunteers, our teenage uh, volunteers, our high school volunteers to come in because we had we had been working with them for two years and, um, you know, built some of those relationships. And this is Paige is a um, organization that was created by Dr. Deborah Hicks Rogoff at Duke University to bring um, uh, to really concentrate on uh, global education, digital education um, for girls here in um, the rural areas of North Carolina. And so these girls sign up to be a part of PAGE. And actually, one of the things that we did, I'm going to go back a little bit. One of the things that we did was this picture here on the bottom with the dog and the little girl reading the page girls we worked with them and they wrote children's stories one year and then we they did them on storybird and we had them published so we got the digital piece in we we looked at you know all kinds of digital skills and and story building and that kind of thing and um we actually published hard copies of them and we cataloged them and we put them in the library um, and they could come see their work. They could check out their work um, here in the library. And this was actually, um, I think this was about, this was last year with uh, one of our read with me um, kids. And she was actually, and that was one of the goals was we would love for some of these storybooks to be used with our read read with me programs for the kids that came in and, re and read with the dogs. So we actually still have these books and it's in, and they're part of the collection. And, um, and that was a really, that was a really fun project to do with those, with those girls. So the, um, this, this project has been consuming my life lately, just because I'm working on it now. Um, the teen summer reading program um, was something that we started a few years ago. Um, the teachers in Madison County, the high at the high school level, they wanted the kids to have a book to read over the summer, and we this has kind of morphed and is evolving and it is becoming something even more, even totally different for next year, but. The first year it started, um, we had, um, I would say about a hundred kids and the way it looked, they would have a book that was assigned. We would purchase a certain number of copies of that book so that the kids could come and check it out um, at, at all three branches of the library. And then we would offer workshops. So at some point during the summer, they 
could sign up. There were specific, specific dates and they were located. We had different dates at all three um, branches of the library and they could sign up to come to one of those workshops. And we kind of workshopped the book. We would talk about the book. We would do some different activities with it. Um, and they would have to use their knowledge of, and understanding of the book to complete all of this stuff. And then when they went back in the um, school year, they would, um, we would let the, the English teachers know who had attended and when, and then they received like 100 as a test grade to start the year off. Um, this year, uh, as you can see, it's grown to, we had, I think we had 284 teens in 2017. And we just um, don't have the, the calendar time anymore and the staff to deal with um, this many workshops. So we're in the process of creating um, a teen summer reading program in conjunction with the high schools where it, it's, a, it's kind of, it's modeled after our kids and adults where they're, they will get like a packet of activities. They, they will, um, the teachers are deciding on the assigned reading and then we will take that and, and collaborate with them and create different activities around that book for the kids to do during the summer. And each card, each activity will be on a card and that, um, that will, uh, once they complete it, they can enter that into a prize drawing. And then that'll also give them a chance to prep for whatever work they're gonna do with that book when they get back to, um, to school in the fall. So that's still a work in progress right now. Um, in fact, I, I'm, I'm meeting with the teachers. They just chose those their books. Their theme is Appalachian literature. So we kind of have to deviate from um, the universe of stories or whatever the theme is, or try to marry the themes um, if we can. But we're working on that. And the teachers, um, the teachers actually suggest some of the activities and then um, my children's programming um, coordinator here at Mars Hill and I work to create the, um, the rest of the cards and activities and things like that. So we won't, um, we won't do the workshops this year, um, which that frees up about three weeks of, um, three weeks of time in our calendar. Um, but and I think that they'll and they'll enjoy having the the variety of activities. We'll see. It'll be it'll be something different. But we have had lots of tweens and teens saying, you know, well, I want to do a summer reading program packet, too. But, you know, the kids one is a little bit too babyish and the adult one is too adult. So um, so this will be one that um, we'll we'll have to see how it goes. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be great. Um, the the two books that the English teachers have chosen are um, actually written by local writers too. And so I mean, we're always excited to, um, to collaborate with our local writers and, um, and hopefully we'll have some um, teen author talks here at the library as part of that program. And then um, the last two kind of go hand in hand. So we created Literacy Connections um, as kind of like, a, it's like a literacy council for um, Madison County, but it's under the, the library's umbrella. And with this, we, um, we focus on a variety of things from 21st century skills like dig digital literacy, um, to workforce development, to um, GED uh, tutoring. Um, uh, it has, this has been um, pretty much a grant driven project. So we've relied on grants. Well, we've, re we've relied on grants for, for several of the things. I mean, like a lot of small libraries do. Um, we are um, hoping that uh, it can be its own 
fully funded um, entity eventually, and we won't have to rely on the grants. Um, and that would give us a little more flexibility maybe to connect to wider audiences. Um, and Literacy Connections is also um, sometimes can be focused on uh, the vol needing volunteers. So with our um, GED program, we have um, we also we have a literacy coordinator who works with GED students, but we also need we also have some volunteers that work with them too, um, and that's a that's a tough one. GED is a tough one because um, there's a there's a commitment piece that lots of times. Um, gets kind of dicey. Uh, you're also dealing with, um, you know, family things. You're dealing with job things. Um, you're sometimes you're dealing with probation things. Um, it's and, and confidence. Confidence is a huge one. Um, we had a we had a guy that we finally got to take the GED and for the law, he was holding back for the longest time just because he, he was like, I'm scared I'm going to fail. Um, and so that's the confidence is a big piece, a big piece of it, too. Um, the uh, elite jail program at currently um, it's on hiatus just because we've had, you know, shifts in leadership and um, not enough, not enough hours for our literacy coordinator and our volunteers. Volunteers go into the jail, they go into the jail and they um, work with the um, prisoners and uh, it's it's one on one, which can be a little disconcerting for some people. Um, they try and get them to pass the high set and that that um, this is also a, um, a program that you know, it can it can be an emotional roller coaster for the people involved because you can get get them get the prisoners ready and psyched up, and then suddenly they're transferred to somewhere else, and um, that can be a little bit uh, heartbreaking. But you can tell by the testimonials that it's been like um, it's really been life changing for a lot of people there, um, not just for prisoners but for um, the volunteers and the, the people involved with them. So that one's on hiatus. We're hoping that we will bring it back soon. Um, but that's just, a, like I said, it happens with, with everything. You've got changes and only so many hours in a day. So um, yeah, that's it. This is our wonderful staff, and I definitely didn't want to leave them out of the presentation because they're 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 really the big part and the big reason why um, why we got Best Small Library in America. So hey, I'm glad I didn't go over my hour. <laughs> Yeah, you did great. Awesome. Um, we have a few questions about some of the things you talked about. Sure. Um, and I think we just yeah we just got a few here we'll do um, for the Eco Explorer Hotspot uh, program. Do the parents provide the transportation to get the kids there for that? Yeah, that's all. Um, that's all up to the parents to do. It's um, and there are lots of hotspots all across um, around our region. So we get to be a part of that, and that and that also brings a lot of um, people from the Asheville area into Madison County. To and we we do have at our main branch, we do have a um, Native Garden Initiative. So that's that's another big reason that um, Eco Explorer connected with us too, because we have an initiative that um, that really is focused on. Um, they've done some great work with the native gardens there. And so that gets, that gets some people into like seeing the, the beauty and everything around uh, Madison County and learning yeah. more about what we've got, what we've got going on ecologically. Uh, right. Yes. Um, and so let's know uh, for that one, what did PAGE stand for the acronym PAGE? PAGE stands for partnership for Appalachian Girls Education. Uh, right, that was the girls reading, yeah. The one reading to the dog, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and as someone, this is actually a common thing, someone says they're familiar with STEM, but what is STEAM? You know, we've added in another letter to that acronym. 
Yes. And now I think that okay. some people are calling stream. I mean, right. um, steam is just has an arts uh, capacity right. in there. The um, and the arts, yeah. And an arts, yes. And yes, and it has, as you said, it has now people are call it, talking about stream, which adds in an R for reading. Reading, which I'm kind of like, yeah, there was probably reading there before. There should have yeah. been reading there before. But. <laughs> and the books that you used for the teen event, the teen um, summer reading program, um, what books, what um, are some of the titles? Someone was wondering what that you used. Oh, gracious. Okay, let me think. So last year they had another Appalachian focus. They did The Tall Woman by Wilma Dykeman, and she's she's a big North Carolina ecological and um, women's rights uh, person before before that was really, you know, OK. Um, the Tall Woman was one of them. And then um, I Am One of You Forever by Fred Chapel, another North Carolina writer. Um, the year before that. Oh, I'm trying to think. I know we have done um, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I think we did that two years. And last year was actually the easiest year because they finally pared it down to two books. Um, uh, the years before that, everybody had, every grade level had a different book. And my battery is getting, my battery is getting low. <laughs> Uh, but um, I can get a list if y'all want a list. I can get a list to you. For sure. sure, I'm sure they like that. Yeah, just for some ideas for themselves too. Yeah. Um, and for these partnerships that you have, just a quick last one, last fast question. Um, did you seek out them, or did uh, are some of these approach people approaching you, or? Oh no. Oh, I think we may have lost her. Oh, it looks like we may have lost Shauna. Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't know if it's her connection or her, yeah, her battery may have just said no. <laughs> Not a problem. Anyway, um, thank you, Shauna. Even though you seem to be, uh, let's get that off there. See if she'll come back. Yeah. All right, that's okay. So that was a great presentation. Um, and we'll have the slides and she'll get those book lists and everything to you later. I'm gonna pull back presenter control.